Welcome to the Data Scientist Podcast with Dr. Stylianos Kabakis. Dr. Kabakis is a data scientist, statistician, and blockchain expert with a mission to educate the public about the wonderful capabilities of technologies like AI, data science, and DLTs. These technologies have the potential to transform the world, the economy, and our lives. However, there is too much misinformation around tech, and so most people are just confused about what is true and what is not. Whether you are a CEO, an entrepreneur, or just an enthusiast, the Data Scientist Podcast helps you separate reality from hype. Hi, everyone. In today's podcast, we're going to discuss whether China is going to overtake the US in AI research. So something which is well known is that China, for a few years now, has been producing more research papers in artificial intelligence than the US. And so while this has been happening for some time, everyone who has been involved in this area as a researcher knows that the majority of papers produced in China are not of very high quality. Some papers might actually even be fraudulent. They might report uh, results which are just not true, or they might simply replicate like other types of studies with, without really demonstrating any kind of originality. However, for the first time, like for the first time in history, China has started to match the US in quality as well. Again, quality can be something subjective, but the metric used by the Allen Institute was the percentage of papers in the top 10% based on citations by other papers. So the US uh, still has the advantage in this metric, but this advantage now is quite narrow. So the United States owns around 32% of the papers, and whereas China owns around 27-28% of the papers. Again, some people might say that, hey, you know, citations might not be the only metric of quality, and I'd say they're right because there are like other ways to measure quality, it's just that citations is one fairly straightforward way. I mean, if we measure it through best paper awards, then uh, the US is still far ahead. However, what this demonstrates is that China is definitely getting stronger and stronger in AI. So the Chinese government has committed to for China to become a world leader in artificial intelligence by 2030. And it looks like they're doing a good job at that. At the same time, the US, the US government has been criticized for its immigration policy, which can have a very negative impact on research outcomes. That being said, I find it interesting that all these reports and the conversation always is around, you know, this conflict between the US and China. It's interesting that uh, Europe, as well as the UK, they're quite often left outside of this debate, given the UK's strength in this area and also Europe's potential to become a world leader in this area. In Europe, including the UK, is probably the most affluent, let's say, international zone in the world right now. There's also an abundance of data. There are many great universities, many research initiatives. However, uh, we still don't hear maybe as much as we should around AI research coming out of Europe. I mean, the UK is leading the race in that, but I still believe there are many more things that can be done. Something which um, has not been discussed enough, in my opinion, is the potential negative impact that GDPR is going to have on AI research. And so I was recently reading for example, an article, I can't remember where exactly it was, I think it was in The Economist, but essentially what this article was saying is that uh, we need data in order to come up with better solutions for, you know, for anything basically where we're going to apply AI. And with GDPR, using data just becomes more difficult. So healthcare is a very good example. I mean, we need, I mean, AI is the future of healthcare. And with national health systems being under stress, it is of paramount importance to automate as many of the processes as possible. 
That being said, in order to do this, uh, we need a huge amount of data, but there are very strict data privacy laws as how this data can be used and under what circumstances, etc. There was also a scandal around DeepMind making unauthorized use of data from the NHS. But at the end of the day, people might be a bit too paranoid about how their data is being used, since if the data is properly anonymized, then the data that you have generated can be used to save human lives and treat diseases. And like, I don't really understand why so many people get paranoid about that. I think there's quite lots of, I'm not sure how to describe this, maybe skepticism or conservatism around technology, maybe in Europe right now. And it's really like the way that people approach data collection or data usage is not very mature, let's say. Obviously, there have been many abuses, many abuses by big companies that have, like Cambridge Analytica being the most prominent example. But then again, that, that being said, the solution is not to just have very restrictive data policies, because this is just going to place Europe behind the US and China. Okay, and that's the, that's the way things are. So maybe we need more, maybe we need better solutions in order to uh, monetize patients' data, to anonymize data, to safeguard data. But in any case, we should have regulations and policies whose main goal is to share data for research in a safe way and not simply protect the consumers against some kind of malicious threat like advertising by big companies, okay? So that's not going away, okay? So that that's, this is how the internet works. We generate data, then we receive ads, and this, and we, you know, and everything, as everything moves toward to digital, then this trend is just going to continue. Yeah, it's just going to carry on. So there's, there's no reason to try and stop this with regulation. Instead, we need to place the right regulations in place, which make sure that we make the best use of this data, uh, while at the same time protecting the well-being of the citizens. And I think well-being is the key, not necessarily the term privacy, because look, if, if for example, you share your data with the corporation and then, or, you know, with, with the pharmaceutical company or whomever, and they use this data in order to generate algorithm to diagnose diseases, but in this data point, you can't, you know, it's impossible for someone to identify you through this data. Then, you know, th th there's nothing wrong with this. So people shouldn't be skeptical of sharing data with uh, companies or the government for this sort of thing. Obviously, I'm not advocating that um, Europe goes down the same path as China of, you know, a mass surveillance state or anything like this. Instead, what I'm advocating is a calmer, a more research-focused approach towards data collection and data usage. So thank you. These were my thoughts on the subject. Please let me know what you think by leaving comments or by dropping me an email at thedatascientist.com. So this was Stelios. Uh, thank you for being here with us today and I hope to see you soon. Thank you for listening. Make sure to visit thedatascientist.com for more content about data science, AI, and blockchain.